Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bear Tech. Today I'm going to be upgrading my Unraid NAS with some additional storage. Specifically, I'm going to be installing this WD Red 6TB Pro Drive. So as you can see, if we jump across now to my Unraid uh, system, you can see we've currently got uh, eight terabytes of usable space. Um, I've got a parity disk of six terabytes. So all of my drives are WD red. I find their performance and their reliability extremely good. Um, so as you can see here, I've got the uh, this message, this, this warning over here saying NAS003, disk one is high on, on disk usage. So it's currently at 96% utilization. So by adding this six terabyte drive, we'll take our usable space of eight terabytes up to 14 terabytes. So the drive actually cost me about 200 Great British Pounds, bought it from Amazon. So although this process is pretty simple, uh, there are a few considerations which you need to take into account. First of all, does your motherboard support additional SATA ports? Um, so this drive here is a serial ATA or SATA, um, ideally six gigabits per second. Um, different motherboards, my older motherboards, for example, uh, might have slower speed. So uh, SATA 3, for example, might be three gigabits per second. Um, so that's one thing you need to take into account uh, at the age of your motherboard. But also something else which we need to be mindful of is the amount of power that we have available from our power supply. So today I'm also going to be upgrading the power supply unit just to give it some additional power uh, for those drives should they need them. So in case you're wondering, you know, with the whole global energy crisis, you know, should you really be up, upping the amount of um, watts your power supply uses just just be aware that it doesn't actually constantly run at for example in this case we'll be upgrading it to a 750 watt psu um, it'll actually just use up to the amount that it requires don't fall into the trap that i have before where you think that potentially the new drive doesn't work and therefore you rma it or you send it back to the supplier I always recommend personally plugging the, the new hard drive into a drive caddy or into another computer and just check that the drive is, um, is recognized and that you, know, you can format it. Because ultimately, if you then put it into another motherboard, the motherboard might not support that particular drive or it may be a PSU issue. So there's not enough power to actually, when you plug in that additional drive, to actually power the additional drive in that computer. So today, what I'm going to actually be doing is two things. First of all, I'm actually going to be installing this new drive uh, into my Unraid server, but I'll also be upgrading the 450 watt power supply that's currently in there to a 750 watt power supply that I already have that's spare and surplus to requirements. So as you can see uh, from, um, from the desktop now, uh, we've currently got eight terabytes of usable storage on my NAS. Uh, the warning over here is telling us that uh, there's 96% utilization currently. So by adding this additional six terabytes of storage onto my Unraid system, I'll be increasing that up to 14 terabytes of usable storage space. So when using Unraid, you need to be aware that the largest size disk you can install must be equal to or less than the total value of the size of the parity disk. So in this instance, I've got a six terabyte parity drive in my Unraid system, which means that the largest drive I can install at the moment is up to six terabytes. So now that we've got the drive ready, I'm going to shut down the NAS and we're going to uh, take it apart, open it up, install a new PSU and uh, route the cables for the new drive. Right, okay, so we've got the EVGA 750 watt BQ power supply right here. So this is a semi-modular power supply, which essentially means that we get our CPU power, PCIe power, uh, which is actually hard cabled into the power supply unit. And on the back of the PSU, um, we've actually got uh, ports or connectors where we can then plug in auxiliary cables so we can power various different um, components within inside the NAS. So for example, uh, we've got, got three SATA um, ports here. So we can essentially connect up to three uh, cables um, to power various different devices inside the NAS. So at the moment, as you'll see in a few seconds, when I open up uh, this NAS, the problem that I have is that the, uh, the power supply, the current power supply that is in this NAS is it's uh, not modular at all. So all the cables are hardwired into the PSU and there simply isn't enough uh, SATA ports for me to connect up all the drives. So that's another reason why I'm actually upgrading the PSU in here now because I'm actually one short for this uh, for this drive. 
So whilst we can use a connector such as this, um, this here is a, a Molex to um, SATA power cable. Um, I just generally just don't like the idea of, of using them personally. Uh, I just I just find them really flimsy. So I'm just going to upgrade the power supply and be done with it. Right. Next up, so we've got the um, we've got the hard drive here. Like I said, I've already tested it, so it's already uh, I know it works in another computer. So we just open it up here, as you can see. I have actually already opened it. Um, but yeah, we'll be installing this drive into here. And in addition to that, we'll obviously need a new serial ATA or SATA uh, cable to connect to the motherboard to the hard drive. So now we've gone over the parts, I'm going to open up the, the NAS and we're going to start removing the old power supply unit. Okay, rather embarrassingly, you can obviously tell I don't really do cable management. So the motherboard in this NAS, which is why I actually love uh, Unraid, is actually because this motherboard is about 12 years old. So this is, um, this is an Asus uh, P8Z68V Pro motherboard. It's currently running uh, an i7 2700K, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and we've got our hard drives hidden behind this cover here. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to take the power supply out and, um, and start cleaning up some of these cables. And once that's free, I'm just going to lift the old power supply out. As you can see, this is actually uh, an old Cooler Master 500 watt power supply. It's worked absolutely fine with these drives in. However, with the new drive, there's just not enough juice to really power that additional drive. And like I said, this is a non-modular power supply, so everything's hardwired in, and there's actually not enough SATA power cables to power all of the drives without us having to use extension power um, cables. With the rails that come with this case and the, uh, the screws for the hard drive, I'm now going to connect these all up and then we'll be ready to install the drive into the NAS. Pay special attention at this point to install the, the actual rails themselves in the correct orientation. So they are secure, they look good. Uh, and uh, now it's just a case of me finding a suitable location in the, uh, in the case to actually install this drive and then we'll route a, a SATA cable uh, to the onboard SATA. So now the cover's back on, we'll now install the new power supply. Okay, so ideally you wanna make sure that any sort of uh, fat intake fan that keeps the power supply cool um, is obviously uh, has access to air you don't want it sort of block, blocked by a top cover or a bottom cover so in this particular case as you can see I've actually got a bit of space here about an inch so air that's being sucked in through the front of the uh, through the front of the case should pass through this area and some air should be taken up into the PSU and exhausted out the back um, so I'm going to install the PSU like so And then at this point, once the uh, PSU is uh, securely fastened into the chassis, I'm gonna take each of the various different motherboard power connectors and then reconnect the motherboard. Okay, so that's the motherboard connected to the PSU. So we'll cable manage this in a second, but next up the serial ATA um, power ribbons. I'm gonna connect them to the back of the PSU and then run power to each of the drives. So I'll be using one ribbon for the far side drives and the other ribbon for the drives that are on this side of the chassis. Okay, so that's everything now connected. The case is now back together and it's now time for us to uh, reconnect it and um, log into Unraid and make sure that it's all working and, uh, and then configure the disk so that it can be used uh, as additional storage within our array. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head back over to the Unraid control panel. Okay, so one prerequisite of this tutorial is we will need to install this unassigned devices um, plugin down here. So assuming you haven't got that, you'll quickly need to follow these next steps to ensure that we have the required plugins 
so that we can uh, pre-clear our disk and add it into the data array. Clicking on apps at the top here, we can click install. So the installation is super quick. Uh, once you get this uh, notification saying that the community uh, applications.plugin is installed, we can just click done. And then here we're just going to accept the disclaimer and then just click I understand. So now this is just going to quickly go away, download all the available community apps for Unraid. So what we want to do is we want to come up to here and we want to type in unassigned devices and we're just going to click on this first one. So this is going to bring up a ton of plugins that are related. What we want to do is we want to install each of these three plugins here. So we're just going to click on install. It'll take a couple of seconds. Just click done and then move across and do the uh, next one. Click done again. And finally, the last one, which is the unsigned devices pre-clear. Click install, and then we'll click done. Okay, so doing that, going back over to the main tab up here, we should now see the section unsigned devices. So this is a prerequisite for this tutorial. You will need the unsigned devices plugin installed. So just follow the steps I've just done, uh, and then we should be good to continue with the rest of this tutorial. So as you can see in the main section, under unsigned devices, we're now seeing our new six terabyte um, drive that we added earlier. At the moment, um, we've actually got a, a new volume here which is formatted with NTFS. And that is because, like I mentioned earlier, I like to pre-test the drives before I actually go and install it into a NAS, especially uh, if access to the drive bays is, is restricted. It's gonna make it much easier if we've actually got a drive failure. But as we can see, uh, it all looks good here. It's been detected, it's got NTFS. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the array now and we'll format that drive and then add it into our pool. So scrolling down, we're going to uh, click here, so stop. This will stop the array and we're gonna click proceed. This will take a few seconds uh, and once it's completed, we should then be able to change various different things uh, with this list of uh, drives. Okay, so now that's now complete, we've got the option to add other drives into our array. So we're gonna come down to here and we're going to First of all, we're gonna clear the disk. So we're gonna click on this little cross and uh, it says, do you wanna clear the disk? I'm gonna click yes, and then click remove. And then once that's done, we then get the option to format this drive. So I'm gonna hit format. And for the file system, we're gonna keep it at XFS. So we're gonna click next. And then I'm gonna type yes and then hit format. So as you can see, the drive is now formatted and we can now add it into our data array. So I'm going to use the drop down box here uh, to select the disk. So we've got one available, and that's obviously because that drive isn't yet known or isn't yet configured to work in our data array um, within Unraid. So I'm gonna click and select that SDC. We're now getting a warning here saying all data on this device will be overwritten when the array is started. So that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to now go down and I'm now going to use the start button to start the array. So as you can see, we've got a six terabyte parity drive and we've got two four terabyte drives and we've got a six terabyte uh, additional data drive which is currently formatting. We're now getting a whole load of writes that are now being written to that drive and uh, that's now probably gonna take several hours to complete. So what we'll do is we'll come back when that's done and review the amount of usable space. As at the moment, you can see our usable space is still eight terabytes. Obviously with the additional six terabyte drive that we've just installed, that should then, once this process is completed, increase up to 14 terabytes. And then you might notice as well here, you are gonna get some uh, notices saying that uh, disk clear has started. And uh, we can pretty much ignore any other messages that might crop up for now. Let's just wait for, we can click close all notifications and we'll just wait for the format process to complete. So at this point, we'll leave it. We'll come back later where we'll verify that the space has increased up to 14 terabytes and um, hopefully it won't take too long and I will see you in probably a couple of hours. Obviously with the magic of filmmaking, however, that'll be just within a few seconds. Okay, so it's a few hours later now. The pre-clear has completed. Um, I had a message pop up here a few seconds ago. Unfortunately, I accidentally clicked off it, so it's not showing up, but uh, we've now got this unmountable disc present, disc free, and what we now need to do is you need to uh, click on this box, accept, obviously, accept the, uh, the notice here, 
um, and uh, click OK. And then what we're going to do is going to click Format. The format was actually super fast. And uh, as you can see now, we're now getting the 14 terabytes of usable storage space, which is fantastic. So uh, obviously the pre-clear took about eight and a half, nine hours. There you go. So that's, that's it all done. Uh, the format obviously took literally a couple of seconds. Obviously the pre-clear was just the, the part that took the longest. That's really it guys. Um, that's all I really wanted to show you. Um, so now we've got all that lovely additional space. Um, which is great. So, yep, yeah, and um, see you in the next one.